Alright guys and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be answering one very simple question. What is the best pet for leveling in TBC Classic? And we're going to be talking about the journey from level 60 to 70, although I will make a video in the future for Draenei's and Blood Elf. Before we jump in, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, that really does help out. Follow me on Twitch and Instagram. So let me tell you how this video is going to go down. First of all, we're going to do a pet analysis of every viable pet family and compare them against each other. Secondly, taming game plan. So what I mean by that is it's essentially going to be a step-by-step -step plan or a path for you to follow to get the best pet in the game, but also tame the best abilities because there's no point having the best pet in the game with low rank ability. So we need to be taming extra pets in order to pick up high rank pet abilities to then transfer to our main pet. So what are the three most important things when it comes to choosing a pet? Obviously, first of all, how fast does a pet get into combat? Because it's, if it's a pet without dive or charge or any of those abilities, then it will just take ages for the pet to actually get into combat in the first place. Secondly, mob kill time. How fast does that pet efficiently kill the enemy that you're trying to kill? Because obviously the faster you kill enemies, the faster you do your quest, the faster you get XP. Pretty straightforward. Then thirdly, we've also got to talk about the availability, particularly at the time of the launch of TBC Classic because obviously there are a number of beasts associated with certain quests which will be frequently killed by other players so it may be difficult for you to get a tame off and then there's obviously also going to be other hunters on your server trying to tame the best pets. Now in my opinion the only pets that are viable are pets with a intercept ability like dash, charge or die. Because with your talent you can get your pet's total speed to 210%. When a pet engages in combat fast it means first of all it's dealing its damage sooner than a pet that doesn't have dash or charge and then it also means you can do your personal damage sooner because your pet is pulling all the aggro. Because obviously if you've got a slow pet you have to wait around before you can start shooting any arrows or anything because you're just going to pull aggro off the pet. But the sooner it gets in there generating aggro, the sooner you can deal your damage and the sooner you can get that mob killed and move on to the next one. So let's have a little look at all the pet families. There's a few new pets available in TBC and also some new custom looks. I will be making a video in the future about all the coolest looking pets that you can obtain in TBC. So again, subscribe and stay tuned for that. But anyway, let's talk about the Ravager. So the Ravager is the highest damage dealing pet in the game. It's most, for most people, it's everyone's go-to raiding pet. So obviously getting the Ravager sorted out before you're level 70 is going to save a little bit of time in the long run because you can have a pet ready for raiding. But anyway, the pet's fast into combat because it can get dive. It's got 10% damage buff. It's got two damage abilities for focus dumping, which is very important. And the ability Gore has a chance to do double damage. It's the main reason the Ravager does slightly more damage than all of the other pets with the same damage buff. And it also has a cheeky 5% armor buff. However, the negatives are it has a 7% HP debuff. It only eats meat. And it's, there are not many actually available to tame in the open world. Talk more about that later when we're talking more about the game plan. Secondly, we have the Wind Serpent. So first of all, it's fast into combat. It has a 7% damage buff. It has two damage abilities for focus dumping. It's got Lightning Breath, which is a magic damage ability, and it's also a range, so it can actually get into combat sooner than any of the other beasts. And you can also get max rank Lightning Breath pre-Burning Crusade. Right, you can get it from Zulgarub, and then you only have to get max rank bite. It has absolutely no stat debuffs, and it will eat bread, cheese, and fish. The only downside is it does slightly less damage than a Ravager. Next, we have the Raptor, very fast into combat with a dash ability. It's got a 10% damage buff, two damaging abilities for focus dumping, because they actually get an extra ability in TBC. And it has a cheeky little 3% armor buff. On the downside, you got a 5% HP debuff. It only eats meat, pure carnivore, and does slightly less damage than a Ravager. Next, we have Cats. Again, fast into combat with Dash. 10% damage buff. It's got two damage abilities for focus dumping. However, it has a 2% HP debuff. Only eats meat and fish. And again, slightly less damage than the Ravager. So let's answer the ultimate question the reason why you click this video, which is the best option. So if you're going 
for the world first level 70, then I'd go for a Wind Serpent, purely because there's less messing about. Okay, you can get max rank Lightning Breath even before the Burning Crusade is released, and you only have to tame a spider very quickly into Rogue Forest to get max rank Bite, and then Bob's your uncle, you proceed to level to level 70. The Ravager requires a little bit more work, but in the long run, going for a Ravager will save you more time, because you, what you want to do is have a raid ready Ravager before you get to level 70. So if you don't really care about getting the world first level 70, I'll go for the Ravager because in the long run that will save you more time. And obviously waiting for your new Ravager to get max loyalty points and therefore max damage and max training points and everything like that is going to take longer. Which means if you're going for the world first, it will be a less optimal option. But again, in the long run, if you don't really care about world getting world first, you care about getting a raid ready raptor before you get to level 70, then go for the Ravager, because the Ravager is the best DPS option when it comes to end game raiding. And honestly, if you're just kind of lazy and just don't really want to be messing about, you just want to put some music on or put some Netflix on and do some leveling, then just get a Wind Serpent jump into the dark portal, then don't bother doing anything until you're level 70. Now let's finish the video talking about the most optimal game plans, the most optimal step-to-step -step process to getting your pets tamed and you're just getting them sorted because you don't want to be leveling up with a pet that is doing nerfed damage because you didn't rank up his ability, it's mainly the bite ability. So, first of all, if you're going for the Wind Serpent, very simple, tame a Zorgorub Wind Serpent for the rank 6 Lightning Breath. You get him to max loyalty point before TBC launches. Okay, and then when you get to Taroka Forest, about level 63, stable that Wind Serpent at Stonebreak, the Hold if you play Horde, or the Illyrian Stronghold if you play Alliance. Then what you want to do is go into Taroka Forest, and then look at this location on the map, get a Dread Fang Lurker, or Widow, doesn't matter which one, and then get it for max rank Bite. All you have to do is keep spamming the ability with that pet tamed, and you should get it taught to your pet training window, whatever it's called. And then you get rid of that spider, teach it on to, sorry, teach it to the Wind Serpent, and then Bob's your uncle get to level 70. Now let's go through the Ravager game plan, which I'd recommend for the majority of people because it will save you the most amount of time in the long run because you only get to level 70 and have a really bad Ravager but doesn't have all his abilities maxed out and he has, you know, no loyalty points maxed out either. This is the best option for most people, but again, if you're going for world first, then go for the Wind Serpent. Anyway, first of all, like before, bring a Wind Serpent from Zorgorub that you do not care about, because you are going to abandon it in the field. You can also bring a cat or a raptor if you prefer. Then, when you're at Taroka Forest, again, stable the pet at Stonebreaker Hold or the Illyrian Stronghold, and then tame a Dreadfang Lurker or a Widow, like I said before, for the max rank bite, and then teach it onto the Wind Serpent. So it's pretty much the same process as the Wind Serpent, but we have an extra slide, a little bit extra stuff to do because we actually need to get the Ravager. So continue questing until you get to Blade Edge Mountains, okay? And then you can totally abandon your pet in the open field. You can stable it if you want to, if you have time for that. Then get the Rip Blade Ravager. Now I've been thinking, why do we get the Rip Blade Ravager from Blade Edge Mountains? Why do we wait that long to get a Ravager? Why don't we just get one from Hellfire Peninsula? Pure and simple, it comes with max gore and dash. So you don't need to expend training points on this Ravager because he's already got most of his abilities. You just need to give him max rank bite, which won't take very long because you'll get loads of points pretty quickly while you're leveling. It's basically like a ready meal. like. You pop him in a microwave and he's ready to go. Because if you go through the effort of taming one from Hellfire Peninsula, then you're going to have to wait a little bit before he gets dash. And obviously, having a Ravager without dash is going to be a bit of a time waste. And then you're going to have to tame this Ravager anyway, the one from Blade Edge Mountains, because you need max rank gore. Whereas this one just comes with dash, max rank gore, Bob's your uncle. Said that probably too many times in this video. But anyway, then you teach him abilities in this order. First priority is bite then Stamina, then Armor, and then Shadow Resist. Then you crack on and get to level 70, or obviously level 68, you probably want to be doing your Karazhan achievement. I do actually have a video on my channel talking about that a little bit, but again, it'll probably be a video in the future talking about like what you need to do at level 70. And there's a lot of things you need to do before you actually get to level 70 if you're trying to save 
the most amount of time as possible. But anyway, that's obviously a future video. And that actually concludes this video, so my name is Medigoblin, to my next video, ciao.